<laughs> it told me so on the screen. Good evening. Um, there was a slight moment of panic there. Hello, welcome to Janome Stitch Club. Sorry, I'll get you at the right angle um, for the end of May. And uh, my name is Julia. I'm one of the Janome educators. I didn't do this introduction last month because it all went horribly wrong. So I'll get through it this month. Um, and the idea is that during these live sessions, I go through some of the stitches that you've got on your machines and how to use them and what the different stitches are for. And this week's stitch, oh, sorry, this month's stitch is the blanket stitch. Now, I'm a big, big fan of the blanket stitch because I'm quite a big fan of hand stitching and embroidery. And as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the deal breakers on a sewing machine. If your sewing machine does a good blanket stitch, oh my goodness, it's it's a game changer. Um, I particularly love lots of forms of applique and I think that the blanket stitch gives such a lovely finish. When you want something that's just a little bit more um, folksy, a little bit more home homespun I don't know if that's the right kind of word but we've already looked at the straight stitch options we've looked at the satin stitch options all oh, good looks some people are starting to make themselves known Yvonne good evening hello welcome and I thought time to look at the blanket stitch and this month's project which frankly I've left it quite late if you're planning on making it for a tea party next weekend. Um, here we go. I think that's back to front as you see it. So <laughs> apologies for that, but it does say tea lover. Um, Danielle, hello, good evening. Now you don't need to go all out with the red, white and blue and the pom-poms because let's face it, tea is not just for Jubilees, it's for every evening. Who's just come in? Maureen, hello, Sue, hello. But if you do have a tea party that you're planning, Diana, hello, um, this could be the centerpiece, couldn't it? And uh, look at those pom-poms, look at those pom-poms. Leslie, hello, good evening, welcome. Now, if you didn't or don't think you're going to get it done in time, then you can do it in anything. Um, this was some bee fabric that I've had for a while and uh, I've got a friend who's into, very into bees. Um, in fact, they keep bees. So I thought this would make the ideal Christmas present. And yes, I have said, the, I'm just looking to see because I've lost the comments. So let's make sure, yeah. So, as I say, it's a tea cosy and you can do anything you like with it. In fact, after I'd done the B1, I suddenly thought I should have put B love and not T love, really, shouldn't I? So when last month, uh, what did we do? Yeah, Easter, I did an alphabet as well. Kathy, hello. I did an alphabet for the little Easter bags um, and it's the same style of lettering so if you did want a few extra letters maybe print off that download as well and um, you can have C lover, B lover, <laughs> anything you like really or you could just do the hearts if you think the lettering is all a bit much. So why don't we get down to it and I need to introduce you to my new girl. Beck Canada, good heavens! Good evening. Good evening. Is it evening? Might be afternoon. Well, welcome, Becky. Nice to have you with us. Um, let's get on to it. I've got a new girl in my sewing room. I need to say that quietly because I don't want to upset Jade in the corner there. But I thought that as we are doing, I'm going to turn you around now and just give you a little, a little view. Here she is. Now, she is the Atelier 9 which is sewing machine wise is exactly the same as the Atelier 7. And I know a couple of you who've come up on the screen who I do actually know have got the Atelier 7. Um, 
one of the reasons for this is because there's a bit more space here and this fabulous lighting so I'm hoping that it means I can get you in quite close so that you can see cat oh my goodness we've got Barbara from California as well well this is very exciting I'm very excited to be international big welcome to you both of you ladies and like I say I imagine it might be afternoon where you are so here she is. So if for Canada and America, you'd know this is the skyline. Um, she's one of the mid arm, um, so not a, as big as the 9450s or the 15,000. Um, but I have to say she's a lovely machine. We've only been together a short while and she hasn't got a name yet. So any suggestions, please do put them in the comments um, because I do like my machines to have names. I feel it's a little more friendly so lots of nice features on here which are going to help us but I also think sometimes it's nice because of this here that you can actually kind of see what's going on the screen doesn't do this in real life by the way that flickering thing that's just a reaction to the um, the lighting in in the room tonight so blanket stitch now I'm going to go to this is the stitch card for the 5270 and as I've said before it's it's nice and large so I am going to put my glasses on but I don't actually need my glasses to see this and as you can see a lot of you might find that you've got quite a selection of blanket stitches on your machine and as with all of these stitches you probably just use one maybe two and sometimes that's just because you haven't stitched any of the others out or kind of think, well, do I need them? What do I actually need them for? So as with everything, I always say good idea to stitch them out because it does kind of give you an idea of what they're actually going. Eliz oh, my goodness, Carol. Yes, of course. Elizabeth. Well, they could I call her Betty or is that a bit informal? <laughs> I'll, I'll call her Elizabeth. I think I think you're absolutely right. That's definitely it, isn't it? So I'm going to start on here, just working my way through. But the easiest way to spot the difference is the ones in bold, and this counts for any of these stitches. Anything that is kind of in bold means that it's going to be done two or three times, which makes that stitch far more intense and stand out more. So depending Depending on the job that you're doing is going to depend on which stitch is going to be the most suitable. You'll also find M and R and L. So we've got middle, left and right here. And with this stitch, I always like to think of it as teeth, which are the bits coming out here, and gums. So you can either have the teeth on the right hand side or the teeth on the left hand side. And if you are left handed, do sort of try that because you might actually find it easier to, to eyeball it when you're actually in there. Um, someone's saying something about being respect. Bessie. Oh, yeah, Bessie. OK, OK, we're going to go with that. She does look. At, yeah, I think she could be a Bessie, actually. So. I think it's worth stitching these out and seeing what they're doing and why you might want to use them. And I'm just going to go through the main ones that I think you'll probably use tonight. Oh, hang on. Bessie's just gone to sleep. She's fed up with waiting for me to get started. So I'm going to do a quick run through of those stitches and then get on to the project. I've lost my big scissors already. I'm doing very well tonight. So let's get, there we go, a bit of material. I've got a dark grey in here, so I'm hoping that you'll be able to see it. So let's have a, a little, let's get you in as close as I can. Now, this may or may not work. I've got the magnifier and if I get it at the right angle, I was hoping that, there we go. We'll see about this because I've now got the camera between me, me, me and Bessie. There's something between us already, Bessie. So I'm just going to start this stitch running. This one 
and I am looking for it on here. Yeah, it's oops. Oh, should have done this before I went under the machine. If you look, it's actually one where it's just got one long stitch. So on some of these, there are two stitches on the gums and then it goes down to the, the tooth. And then this one I'm going to do, there's just one stitch. So I'm going to start with that one. Let's just do a bit. And I'll try not to keep knocking the camera. I will hold it up in a second. So I'm stitching onto felt and the project that we're doing is actually got quilting behind it. So look, you can see it's just one stitch there and a fairly short tooth. Bear in mind, like with anything, you can change the length of that stitch. The length of the stitch is on two at the moment. Uh, no, the length of the stitch is on five, so it's quite a long stitch. Sorry, the width of the stitch is on two. So this little tooth is on two, so it's very small. Um, but I quite like this when you don't want your actual stitching to really, really notice. I'll show you in a second because on this one. Yeah, I think you can probably see here. I've used the next stitch I'm going to show you, which is very intense. Um, and there's a much smaller stitch in between. And then next to it, I've used this stitch. So this doesn't notice, the gums don't notice, and the tooth is a bit shorter. So as I say, you might think that this one here is a little bit busy. I do, I only did the heart in it, but I just wanted to kind of show the difference between the different stitches. And I think sometimes this is too much. The other thing to bear in mind is this takes a huge amount of thread because it's doing so much stitching. So if you are on a project where you're doing an awful lot of stuff, bear that in mind because you might not want to use quite that much, much thread. So let's do that slightly more intense one. So that's going to be, and it probably be one of the very first stitches that you come to. So one short stitch going across. I'm not sure if this is helping or not. Do let me know. Um, but as you can see, a lot more actual stitching. And it's going to look even more when you're on something slightly thicker because, of course, the stitch length is going to count there. So I'm just going to finish that one and you'll see the difference. Look there. So you can see how much more effort that's going to be. Um, and if you're going round quite busy shapes, you might find... Actually, Danielle, that's a, that's a good point about bobbin thread. Um, the thread that I'm using on the top is a hundred weight, actually, so it, it's quite a, a thin thread. Um, you can obviously use thicker threads when you're doing this stitch if you want an even more hand done look. Um, but like I say, because you tend to only get 30 meters of those or something like that, um, you know, it, it can cost you a fortune. I, I silly. Um, the Gitterman weight, oh, hang on a second, because I actually I'm on a moon thread at the moment. Let me grab, I've got Gitterman, I do. Um, Gitterman, I think, yeah, is, a, is an 80, I think. I think it's an 80, not a 100 on the um, cotton. I've got the polyester here, which, the, not the polyester, the also. But you're absolutely right. And certainly I would, oh, sorry, just hit the camera. I'm going to get that out of the way for a minute. I would certainly say bobbin thread or something like bottom line in your bobbin. Because, um, you know, number one, you can get far more on your bobbin. But also I think it makes for, I, I mean, I've used the same thread on the bottom here. And you can see it. it's quite thick, isn't it? But... If I was using bobbin fill, 
then I think it would probably be be better and I have got a couple of smoke and um, what's the other one I have got the the it's not clear but it looks almost clear doesn't it um, so I would I very often use those when I'm doing stuff like this and what I also tend to do if I'm doing this on a quilt for example I will just do it through and I'm just gonna come back a bit so you can see but for example if this was a block on a quilt I would just be doing it through the top of the quilt and the batting the wadding I wouldn't be going through the actual backing as well because you know you're going to have a lot of stitching going on here it's quite intense as I say it also means you don't have to worry about what the back of the the quilt is looking like which you know that's traumatic enough most of the time isn't it without having to worry about following very intricate shapes etc and I think that's fairly standard anyway the only thing to be careful with there is if you're using a very fluffy batting so you know sometimes it's it's worth putting almost like a very lightweight um, interfacing or even one of those wash away ones if you find that it's going to get caught down in your feed dogs or something um this one i'm using because i want it this is thermalan which is um a heat proof one because obviously it's a tea cozy but this is quite felty so this is okay but i um one of the other ones i did on i did something very recently on hobbs heirloom which is an 80 20 and that was fine without anything underneath so that's those two. The other one I wanted to show you. Further along the bus, we've got one which I've lost my book with the I never understand how in such a tiny space I managed to lose everything so quickly. So we then go on to the ones like this. So the gums, so the top here are just in single print and then the the tooth is in bold so this one and I'm just going to start that running is just doing that top stitch once it's not doubling it it has to do the tooth twice because otherwise it, it, it has to go down and come back obviously so but you can see the difference with this one as well so as i say you can see there's a marked difference between all of these now this one here and there's another one on this one that i'm going to show you in a minute this is the stitch that i would use if i want to do um sort of a, a cheats version of needle turn because if you use a monofilament in the top thread here obviously you're barely going to see it as, as you're stitching it out um, but we will, I've, I've got a project in mind for using monofill for later in the year. It's a bit of a Christmas one, actually. So I will go through that one again there. But while we're on the topic, I'm going to go onto the second page because the other one I wanted to look at is this one here, which a lot of people also like to use for the same process. And if you don't have a lot of blanket stitches or fancy stitches you can use your blind hem stitch to get this version okay so I think you can hopefully see that so again that one if you're using either an exact match for the background fabric, um, and I've, I've done a little example, so I will run around that very briefly with this one in a sec. Um, or as I say, monofilament for that. Okay, and I think, um, let's do that actually, while we're on there. Here we go. So when I say um, cheats needle turn, Who's just come in? Felicity Fliss, hi, how are you? Um, 
I run round the shape, I stitch all the way round with interfacing, sewing interfacing on the right side and then I turn it through, I trim it and turn it through so you can see there's like an eighth of an inch but it kind of basically does the needle turn for you um, but with this it means that you can then stuff the shapes so I'm going to line that up, I'm going to bring you that, oops, it's my pingy camera stand bring that back in and oh, I'm also going to put my glasses on because it's not helpful having the camera but I think I'm just about there yeah that's better so I'm just off now this is a darker grey than what I'm actually stitching on and I'm just going to go down to the bottom and stop thread bring the back out but look that's so basically that's what you get with that stitch going round and as I say I would probably mess around with my settings a little bit I like the tooth I think that's fine but I would probably want to go slightly longer on my stitch length so there's a slightly bigger gap in between and as I say if I used a monofilament or a much paler grey you'd barely see that but the nice thing about that is that once you get round you can leave a little hole but it does give you the option then of actually stuffing those shapes rather than the bonder web which where it's absolutely stuck down isn't it um, but as I say I have got a, a project coming up at some point with that so we've gone through, I think they're probably the main ones that you would use. If you are on a more basic machine, a, um, a mechanical machine, and you don't have a blanket stitch on there, then the one stitch that you can use is this, okay, which is one of your stretch stitches, but it's the, the offset one. And you can change the width of that stitch so you can get these little angled teeth, you know, just a little bit smaller. Um, and I often do that if I've got um, a children's class because very often they're on the, you know, the mechanicals like the JL 101s, things like things like that. Um, but this this stitch will give them a bit of a blanket stitch. Um, they don't always have the patience, do they? When you say, I'll just show you blanket stitch. And then they'll go, okay, can I do it on the machine? And you think, well, I think most of us are probably with them on that one, aren't we? So let's have a wee look. I just wanted to go through a little bit of the housekeeping for blanket stitch. So I'm going to start here. And I do think hearts are really good practice. If you want to get your sort of eye in for practicing with a blanket stitch, go with a heart because you get curves, you get outside corners and inside corners. So you've basically got it all going on here um, to practice. So let me drop that down, fiddle around with it, and then I will get in a bit closer. And hopefully you can see this. So I'm going to go back to the um, original stitch. So this is the one that's got quite long teeth and a small gap going on. I'm just peering over the camera. There we go. Yep. And as just as I thought, not quite where I wanted it to be. There we go. So I want to be off just on the very edge of my shape with the gum the gums and then the actual teeth are going on to your actual on the web shape now when you start i need to take my pivot off hang on to show you this there we go do just do needle up down and run through the whole stitch because you'll see it's almost like a little dance so we go forwards and then we go backwards and then we go forwards and then we go over and then we go back so it's five 
it's not even a waltz is it so we're just going to go forwards one two three four five one two three four five and that's quite important see how your stitch plays out because when you get down to the bottom here and i want to do a fairly sharp i think i've cut the what's going on there i think i've cut the bottom off my heart oh no it's rolled up that's all right <laughs> here we go I'm going on about a sharp turn so i'm going it's going over i'm now going to just go to my needle up down button because I want to just walk gently in to the very bottom. So I'm going forwards, backwards, and then forwards. Now I lift and turn. But because it's not a sharp angle here, I'm not gonna go all the way round. I need to do this in turns, in stages. So I'm just gonna go, so what's that, 45 degrees? And then I'm going to do that over stitch. Look, one, two, and then it's coming forwards again. And then the next stitch is going back and then forwards. There we go. And then turn again. Okay, so that my next stitch is now going to swing across this way. You'll kind of see what I mean when you do it. But as I go up here, I'm just going to speed up. And then I'm going to stop because I want to show you what's happened on the bottom there. So apart from the fact that my underweb has curled up a little bit, can you see it's almost boxed the bottom of that corner in? And I think that's the, the trick with this is actually that sort of boxing in. So if I get a pen, so say you were coming around out a bit actually. So we're coming round a square, we're coming down to the corner and we're doing a tooth, gum, tooth, gum, tooth there, got enough room for the gum, but if I do another tooth it's going to run along the corner there. At that point I pivot. My next one would go across there, okay, but I can just needle up, lift it and shift it along if I want to or I just let that stitch carry on and then the next one will come in and kind of box it in. Um, if you do have the... <laughs> Honestly, this the pingy camera stand, but never mind, it's still working. If you do have this screen here, then just above where it's showing you the stitches, you've got a B button, okay, and that means beginning. And if you look at the way this stitch is stitched out, it starts with a gum and then goes on to a tooth. If you press the B button, it's going to go into a gum stitch. I'm hoping that this makes sense and you're not all just sitting there going, what is she talking about? But what it means is if I want at any point, if I've finished on, like, I'm on the outside edge with the gums and I then think, oh, I need a bit more gap before I do another tooth. I can take that stitch, press that, and it will take me back to the beginning, which gives me that extra stitch. And sometimes when you're doing things like um, letters and I've, I, did I make these easy? I don't know, possibly not. Um, but when you're doing shapes like this and you're just trying, you're not going to be able to get completely on the money. It's a bit like when we were doing the satin stitch, you know, obviously your stitch is wider. so you won't get it quite as sharp sometimes but you'll have a pretty good go and the more you do things like this and as I say actually watch that stitch kind of step out as it as it does its little dance then you'll soon get in the habit I mean frankly by the time you've done you know quite a few letters and I think if you have got a new machine particularly this this sort of stuff is always a really good one um, I always give a bit of a plique to beginners, actually, because I think that it's actually a really good exercise in learning about controlling the positioning of the needle and the stitches and, and using your foot. So while we're on the subject of feet, 
Um, I am using my favourite, which is the um, the open toe, the custom craft uh, foot, the F2. Okay, which is one of the satin stitch feet. If you got a uh, quilting kit with your machine, you would probably have this in with your quilting kit. And it's the one, it's got the groove, so it runs nicely across the thicker satin stitches, etc. But I love using this because, as you can see, it's nice and open. Um, I haven't used, this is the applique, the actual applique foot. Um which is slightly shorter. Oops, I haven't put this one on because this is a seven mil and um, I'm working on a, a nine mil tonight and I haven't got a nine mil version. So this one here, as you can see, look slightly shorter in length. So quite good for curves. Um, and on all of these feet, you'll see markings which give you the center point so again, when you're doing those stitches that go, if it's got an M next to it, that means that the actual gums are running in the middle. They're exactly in the middle, so you can line up with that mark there. Um, and it also means that if you actually extend your stitch, if you make your stitch width bigger, then it will do it from the middle out. Uh, we went through this, didn't we, with the um, zigzag and the satin when we were doing the satin stitches so on here you've got this gap here so if you are using the R setting then the R the right hand side is going to line up with this gap here but I mean you'll soon get an eye for that and you'll work out which foot you prefer um, sometimes people like to actually have this bit so that they've got something actually marking it. Uh, personally, I, I prefer this one. I, I like to have it really open so that I can actually judge what I'm doing um, as I'm going around, particularly if I'm going around quite intricate shapes, because sometimes these slightly closed ones, you're, you're just going to keep losing that line anyway. Um, if you don't have an open toe foot but you have a walking foot then very often the walking foot you may have the open toe walking foot so you could use that one um, but having said that walking feet don't generally like a lot of backward movement a lot of toing and froing so um, just be aware of that and keep your speed nice and low i often find that even if I'm quilting and I'm on one layer of batting and the top, I don't necessarily need the walking foot. It's only when I put that the backing on that the walking foot starts to sort of be necessary because of getting the sort of puckers on the underneath. But when you're doing this kind of decorative stuff, you know, you can actually use the right foot for the job, which makes life a little bit easier, doesn't it? So... How are we doing with the pattern which you can download it's on the Shinomi UK website there is actually a page under inspiration there's a whole page of uh, Stitch Club stuff uh, with all the downloads and previous ones we've done You'll notice, I and I think I did put a note on it actually for the ones that you're actually print out. I've done the lettering already mirrored. So when you actually trace this onto your uh, bond web or your, um, what's it, steam, steamer scene, I can never get that. I don't use that one very often. I'm, I'm a, a bond web girl myself, but oh, one thing I will say about steamer scene make sure you use the light. Uh, the heavy duty one for this sort of thing, you might find your needle starts getting a bit gummed up and it, it won't like it because it's got quite a lot of glue on it because it's a much heavier duty one. Um, but these are already mirrored. OK, so you can just trace those out on to the papery side, not the rough side of 
the bond web and then that means they're going to be the right way up when you iron them on to the wrong side of your fabric just fold that line there and sellotape them together and you'll get the the whole of the shape for your tea cozy and just remember and again I think I put it on the actual pdf when you're cutting out your lining cut the whole shape but make it an inch longer because the easiest way to do it is the sort of back and bind technique so what I've done here is I've got that extra inch and I've just turned it up to actually do the binding on the bottom there um where's the other one with this one, I didn't have enough of this uh, gingham to do the lining, so I had to use something else in my stash. So I just actually added on a piece of that to bring it over to make the binding on the bottom there. I mean, this is actually quite a good stash buster, to be honest, because you can do the lettering in any colour, can't you? And if you're cutting it out of a fat quarter and you think, oh, it's not going to be, it's not going to fit... It does fit if you fold the fat quarter from corner to corner so that you've got a triangle like that, two triangles, and you'll find that it does actually fit. Um, I do like it when you can get project out of a fat quarter. So let's have a look. So that's so once you've done all of your actual applique, I just want to go through the actual making of the uh, the tea cosy once you've done that you might then want to put in some pom-poms or the other thing I, this <laughs> i got a bit carried away for jubilee because we we do need two teapots if you can't be bothered to do the lettering just, <laughs> just go with the heart and if you've got ribbon you could just blanket stitch all the way along uh, the red and white ribbons and you're going to get that effect but I wanted to show you this because I'm going to use Rick Rack in here so that when it, it stands up like that, I love a bit of Rick Rack. And if you don't want pom poms, then that does quite a nice job when you actually stitch. And I will stitch right close to the edge first with the Rick Rack, then I will lay the backing on top. But that stitch line, as long as I go inside, of that stitch line towards the middle of the thing. I know that um, I'm going to catch all of that rick rack. Or well, like I say, the pom-poms. If you are doing pom-poms, just as a point of interest, um, use your zipper foot. I use that a lot for piping and things like that. And like I say, the pom-poms stick up a bit. So if you put your zipper foot on, then you can have your pom-poms to the side. It's a whole, there's a whole lesson there, surely, on pom-poms. Um, and as I say, the lining is pretty easy because you just go all the way around, pop it inside your tea cosy, and then, as I say, once you've done that, oops, then that bit there, you can literally fold it in, fold it up, and that gives you your binding. So nice and easy. I'll finish this one tomorrow because I've got to quilt the back and this is made out of, this is Liberty fabric as well actually, because that seemed highly appropriate. Oh, Bessie's gone to sleep again. So there we are. Now, I'm very aware of the time because last month I went on and on. Any questions? about any of those stitches or do you want me to actually do that stitching again and just go through the sort of cornering part of it let's get that foot back on are we all okay we're all asleep <laughs> i know a few people have said about having issues with going down into corners I might do it on this one I'll just come down into this corner actually let me do it on the light grey because I think it will show up better won't it 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to my original stitch. Oh, Danielle, um, you should be able to. Yeah, Leslie, I'm, I'm just going to do a corner again. If you make any of these projects, uh, eventually we will have a Facebook page, um, but we haven't got that organised yet. Um, and I, I know not everybody does Facebook, but it is one of the easiest ways. You can also tag um, Janome UK, at Janome UK, on Instagram, if you're on Instagram. And um, just also do the hashtag Stitch Club. Um, Janome Stitch Club and it should get picked up but I think you can also do it on the website on the front page of the website if you scroll down I think there's a section there that says about um, sending in pictures but I would really really love love to see them actually if in doubt you can always tag me at um, Sewing Box Somerset and I if you're happy to I can uh, try and get that onto their website for you so that people can see which would be nice. Right, so let's go down into the corners again. So I'm bringing it. Danielle, Facebook and YouTube, frankly, is enough. Um, I do do Instagram as well, but when in doubt, I have to ask one of my daughters <laughs> for assistance with that. The only reason I do both is because you can post at the same time. But, um, so... Here we go. I'm coming down. So this is the sort of much more intense stitch. So I'm coming down to the bottom. So I'm going to start doing that little walk. So forwards, backwards, forwards and over it goes. So I think I'm going to get one more stitch forwards. Yeah, backwards. And I'm pretty much down at the bottom, but not quite. So I'm just going to lift shuffle it forward a teensy bit and then drop my needle again and I'm right on the very bottom there well I don't know about being down with the the, the young'uns but I have to say I did make a reel um for the Easter one and if if you know I think that might be on Facebook somewhere on, on the page somewhere on Facebook and I have to say it took me an absolute age because it was one of those, you know, stop start things where you have to take loads of pictures. But um, the kids were quite impressed. How the beginning and end stitches come together. Yes, Barbara. So I've just pivoted round. So my next stitch is going to go over. And this is what I mean. It's going kind of back over where I was. So although it's a, a tooth... We're not really going to see that because it's still on the gum edge. So as we walk forwards and backwards and forwards again, the next one is going to come in across and it's going to do that sort of slight crossover at the bottom there. But as I say, if you want to, you can bring your needle up and just shuffle along a little bit so that the next stitch is just kind of a little bit further along I think with all of this have a little practice and see for lettering this isn't my I prefer the slightly shorter tooth and the longer in between because I think this is a little bit much but when I'm doing things like flowers so here we go I'm back down in another corner so back again forwards again and because the corner here isn't a 90 degree it's a 45 sorry this is where I'm going to just turn 45 take one stitch across back and then go forwards one backwards one forwards one and then lift and turn another 45 so it's going to take me, you know, a couple of goes to get round. But as I say, you're not going to... should have put my pivot back on for that, shouldn't I? You're not going to necessarily get round in one move when you've got these, these sort of shapes which aren't completely square. Um, and let's face it, in most of 
the projects and sewing and stuff like that that's exactly what you get it's it's not square is it when you come to um actually let's do it that way i'm gonna finish that because barbara asked about the finishing so i've started here this is where i've begun so let's just for the sake of argument pretend i'm coming i've been all the way around and i'm coming back down so i'm gonna run down here oh i've managed to unthread my needle hang on i hope bessie's not going to be you know well she's not a princess she's a queen so but i hope she's not a bit tired I mean, this is only her first day of sewing. But actually, I think it was me catching it. I've got so many things going on here. What I often do is catch the thread. Oh, it's a different... This is the novelty as well, isn't it? New machine. And of course, it's a different needle threader. So needle up, down to the one that's on the other one and the previous one. Here we go. Whoop. Which actually is fine because sometimes they're a bit stiff, aren't they? When you first get a machine, the needle threader can be a bit, a bit stiff until you kind of wear it in. However, I would not be without, let's get rid of that thread. So let's get back to where we were. Okay, except we were back where we were. Press the B, Julia. There you go. Right. So I'm going to start running down. And it's the same principle, Barbara, as if you're running into a corner. So before you get there, start doing, you know, a couple of stitches before. Keep it slow. And then what you can do is just start doing one stitch at a time. And actually, <laughs> now look, if I put money on this, it's going to be on the money. So I've just done a tooth, brought it back to the gums, but I don't really need another tooth. I think it's going to be too close. So what I'm going to do is just do that stitch there on the gum back. And then I can just do the lock off. And sometimes with these stitches, the ones that are running, if you press as you start sewing, you can press your back stitch. OK, but as I say, I think the answer is always just to. Sorry, that looks a bit messy because I didn't bring my bobbin thread up at the beginning. Um, but it's just slowing it right down so that you can just judge. Look, here's 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 the. Can you see that? Let's point it out. Look, you can see because I didn't bring my bobbin thread up at the beginning, which would have been much neater. Um, but look, you can see and I've just judged it. So like I say, exactly as when you're coming down into the corner. So this is where, look, it's stepped across too much on that corner because I put in that extra stitch and actually I just needed to leave it where it was. So it was going up there and then along because this is what you get. You end up with this jump, don't you? So just every time you get into that corner, slow it right down, one stitch at a time, just to kind of walk it through. And that's why you need to keep walking that stitch before you start. So does that help, Barbara? Um, have we answered? Corners we've done, haven't we? Sharing the makes with done yes 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 i think we've done all of that um i will definitely do as i said monofilament with this to look at the um effects that you can get on there and hang on you'll hear my voice going to the other side of the room <laughs> i'm coming back again <laughs> because I did these samples as well and, and I left them over the other side of the room. 
so um, let's bring you back on the squeaky stand to the front. Ooh, there we go. Ah. Um, so this cushion here, for example, I've actually used blanket stitch all the way around, but I did that method with the heart. So I think you can see, look, they're both stuffed on there. Um, and as I say, you can stitch it all the way around and then just leave a little gap, stuff it just before you finish and then just do that last little inch or so. Um, this one here, I've used variegated thread, which works really well with these colours. And I have to say, I love a bit of variegated thread. But around here, where I've done the, the sashing, I've used one of the other blanket stitches, which might not be under applique. It's more than likely going to be under your quilt stitches. Um, and you'll see that you've got ones like this where it goes on both sides, either equally or this one here where it's offset. And that's, a, a like I say, quite a nice one for doing around there. And for that, I used my ditch foot so that it would run when I'm doing those sorts of stitches that have got a centre line. You can run your ditch foot down there and it just means it's going to sit right in the middle so that the once again the gums are going down the centre but the teeth are going either side. Um, and as I say it just makes quite a nice decorative finish there. So as I say if you don't fancy doing lettering or something just go with hearts because as I say, this this is one of, it seems mean, but this is one of the ones that I would probably give to a beginner. Oh, I've got a halo. I've just realised that, um, that I might start a, a beginner on because I think that, you know, it's probably easier than they think. And if I've got them on a computerised machine where you can slow it right down, then that works a treat, doesn't it? So... I think that's it for this evening, unless anyone's got any questions. And I'm just leaping up because next month, oh, yes, I can show you the ditch foot, please. So, oh, hang on, it's in a different box because it's a, a new machine. <laughs> Um, you know, what would have been easier to go over here? Too many feet. It's the S foot. This one here. So it's got a little um, lip and it's got the full whammy of the hole there. Okay. And you do need that because obviously you're using a stitch that's got a swing in the needle. So if I'm doing like a feather stitch or something like that, um, if I'm doing a star, for example, I quite like doing a feather stitch along. Um, I've done a few Lone Star quilts and I've used it as a decorative stitch along there and that sits in the ditch. But it does mean that you get those nice stitches either side. Um, I was just going to say something else. Oh, you do, if you've got uh, an AccuFeed, so you are using it within quilting, the clip-on bits that go onto your AccuFeed, there is a ditch one of those as well that, again, has got that lip. Um, uh, I don't know what model you're on. I think you might be a category C on your one fliss, in which case it's a different foot, isn't it? You, I don't think you have the clip off. I think it's an actual whole bit of foot. Um, but as I say, if in doubt, then just put something in the comments. Oh, I'm about to put a seven millimetre foot into the nine millimetre machine. So next month, this is in progress. This is in progress. Um, I was going to do some of the uh, edging stitches, the, the sort of, I never know whether it's a scallop or a scallop. <laughs> I think one you eat and one you have, <laughs> I don't, one you have round, round your clothing. Um, 
so it was going to actually be a Barbie dress, but I wasn't sure that everyone would have a Barbie to dress. But it could easily be transformed. I'm a big fan of making Barbie dresses. That's where I started my sewing and I have continued. Um, but yeah, so this will probably be a bit of a hoop with um, and I'll do a PDF so that you can do the outlines for the actual tailor's dummy. Um, and then you can just go to town because uh, I, I thought my daughter, who is a, a avid dressmaker um, and loves all the sort of Dior and things like that, you know, um, might see if I can do a few versions of that. But it just seemed a good a good way of practicing some of these lovely edging stitches. So we'll have a little look at that, a little play with that next month because we have got, you know, wedding prom season is upon us, isn't it? So um, even as a little card, that might be something quite nice. So I think that's it for this evening. And woohoo, I've come in at under the hour. Phew. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for sticking with it. Um, if you can, you know, do a like or a comment or something like that. It would be lovely to know if this is the sort of thing that you want me to do or if there's other stuff that you want me to do. If anyone knows anyone that they think this would be useful for, do pass it on. The videos will stay up. I'll upload the video once we're finished. That takes a little while. And it will also be uploaded onto the Genome UK uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, and as I say, if you think of anything after the event, just put it in the comments because I do check on the comments, you know, constantly. So if you make a comment in two weeks time, I will still pick that up and be able to answer it. So uh, hopefully see you next month. And if you are having the Jubilee weekend um, over here, have a wonderful time. Fingers crossed for the weather um, and enjoy your tea. And to the girls who were further flung um i hope you have a good rest of your day thanks ever so much for watching see you soon